Yeah. yeah. It's funny because I think if someone were to ask me what things did I do to improve my parkour skills in the last <clears throat> three to four years, I would tell them not doing parkour. <laughs> really? Not, not doing parkour helped my parkour. And, um, and I get, I think in that, that led to, you know, focusing on diet and stuff as well. But, um, let's see, how can I begin this discussion? Um, let's see, L let's see, uh, lifting. I started lifting during a time when I was suffering from jumpers knees. So I had to take a little break from taking high impacts. So I was like, okay, I don't feel like I have a very strong upper body. Let me work on that. So mm -hmm. the lifting, the explosive power that I gained in my upper body then allowed me to climb better, to ball better, to prevent myself from getting injured when I eventually did start doing parkour. So that's how lifting helped me. <clears throat> um, trail running, I would <clears throat> trail run cliffs, uh, you know, ridges on Oahu and that helped me with my speed. You know, you when you trail run, you constantly are, have to be extremely aware of the ground and what you're running on, obviously, and so you don't mess up and, and fall off the side of a cliff. And so <clears throat> that helped me be a lot faster in parkour, just being able to make decisions um, midline <clears throat> um, helped me from, from, you know, eating crap, bailing, <clears throat> and that's how trail running helped me. Uh, Surfing, surfing, just, I could, you know, I have, I have, can have a whole discussion about surfing, but <clears throat> surfing, a lot of surfing, I feel like is almost the opposite to parkour because parkour, you have full control of what's happening. You have control of every single thing. And in a sense, you're like, you're the master of the arena. You're kind of like God in your little like arena of like urban obstacles and everything you do is like, it's up to you. Where surfing, a lot of that is giving up yourself to the wave to nature and you're basically like you're you're doing you're only allowed to do what the wave is allowing you to do and so mm -hmm. it's a sense of surrendering yourself and mm -hmm. yeah just surrendering yourself to what is happening and going with the flow and so mm -hmm. i believe that that helped my parkour and allowing myself to feel flow to feel the the environment around me challenging and pushing me to do something i think a lot of people go into um training like oh i have this thing in mind that i want to do and i just need to do that <clears throat> i think now like of course that's the half of it but another half is like okay let me look at this environment and try to listen maybe not listen but look and see what the environment wants me to do with it instead of me going in with the headspace of like this is my land to conquer and let me conquer it with my movement. It's like, let me go into this land and let it tell me, oh, this is what's already here. How can I put my body into a position that is um, a reflection of what already exists? And so that's how surfing helped me. And then <clears throat> um, how diet comes in, it's like, well, um, you know, obviously our body it runs off of fuel and how well we feed it is is greatly going to determine how we perform and <clears throat> you know from the time i started doing parkour even until now like especially in the beginning it's like parkour, i just look around and like parkour guys are like kind of depicted as scrawny guys with above average strength legs <laughs> <laughs> and like, yeah, even, now, I mean, I think now lots more, a lot of athletes are lifting and they're, they're, you know, honing in on their diets better. But looking back, I'm like, yeah, we're a bunch of scrawny guys with above average strength legs and definitely undernourished. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. I mean, I think a lot of OGs can, can, um, um, What's the word? Uh, relate to what I might say, but like, I remember training from 11 in the morning to 11 at night. And 
eating one meal and it would be like McDonald's because we were all poor and broke and we couldn't afford anything else. And we had no sense of what was good for us anyways. So, you know, it was great. We got something cheap, we we're full, but definitely not eating enough. And that's why mm -hmm. we were so, you know, scrawny and, um, and, uh, yeah, we definitely, we definitely weren't feeling, feeling ourselves, um, as we should. And I think the, the, the biggest turn in the community was when Tim Sheaf went vegan. That's when all the athletes started to become more food and uh, nourishment conscious. All of a sudden, there was a high-level athlete realizing that, oh, burgers and fries is not the most optimal diet. Um, maybe we need to look at a more plant-based diet. Maybe we need to think about what we're putting into our body instead of just training 12 hours a day and eating the cheapest meal. <laughs> I mean, I was in London for a time and even training with them, like in, this was pretty recent, like 2018, it was like, we would just train and then go to um, the shop and get a, 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 what was it called? Like a three pound meal deal. It's three pounds, you get sandwich, drink, and like a bag of chips. <laughs> That's what we ate. And it was like, you know, some of the stuff is good, but like for if you look at other sports and the amount of activity, like basically I, I put parkour like right next to, I want to say uh, like any other elite sport like CrossFit um, and you can see what they're eating. And if anything, we're doing more than they are. We're doing elite athlete level activity without the diet and the training. And so I got to a point where like, what if we fed ourselves like these athletes? Mm -hmm. um, um, I love the video. I think Storm made it. Yeah, they made a video during the Olympics. Basically, I think that the whole premise was like, mm. don't forget parkour athletes who are doing Olympic level movement activity without the safety of the track without the formal training without the diet and you know it has you know guys massive long jump triple jump all these things and i love that video because it's like wow yeah like if you train parkour at a high level we're like and you're truly dedicated like we're training like basically at any competitive level in sure. the but sure. we lack diet nutrition and at the time, strength training. And so I love the direction that the community is going into now where like diet is more focused, weight training is more of a focus because we are again, stepping into the, our fullest potential.